are you looking for another recommendation, you know, show to watch during this heated summer? Great, I got just a thing for you. In case you haven't watched the previous three episodes, then I encourage you to check them out also. Hi, this is Liana, Holistic Intimacy Coach. Welcome back to my channel. Here, I help you get your orgasmic intimacy. Before I get into today's recommendation, I want to remind you of something extremely important. This show that I'm about to recommend, as well as the other three that I recommended in the past, they are just for entertainment purposes. Meaning, you don't necessarily get personal growth, like significant personal growth out of them. It's just entertainment. They are time consuming. So today's show that I'm going to recommend here has 10 episodes. So somewhere around, I don't know, eight or nine hours of your time. Really decide carefully if you want to give it that time. In case you want just to see new ideas or inspiration, visuals, just nuggets of inspiration the way I see it. Maybe there's something that you can take there for yourself. Okay, sure. That's the research <laughs> and inspiration search uh, process. And absolutely. For personal growth, I definitely recommend that you go for uh, well personal growth processes. Coaching, reading niche books that actually bring you growth. Uh, going for programs, doing practices that help you work through your sensations, emotions, and so on. And those I do also have. I have a lot of programs online on my website. They're linked under this video. An ebook, it's on Amazon. And I definitely have the practices which I publish weekly practices. They are on Patreon, audio. You can take them with you wherever you have your cell phone. You have those as well. That's my big reminder for you. Practice, work on yourself if you want to see growth. Shows and entertainment, they are secondary or tertiary next to actual embodied experience. Always, always remember that. Right, so now coming to today's recommendation. Today I have the uh, show Minx for you. It's on HBO. It's uh, the first season, contains 10 episodes. Here's what I liked about it. First of all, uh, apparently the magazine that it's portrayed in from the 1970s Los Angeles, there actually was one that is somehow emulated, not emulated, it's the inspiration for this show. So the magazine is called Viva. It uh, uh, was published between 1972 and 1978. Really, really progressive and uh, really, really daring to put it out there as well. In the show, because I'm going to stick to the show, there's this woman who wants to publish a feminist magazine, <laughs> women's emancipation magazine, because she just, she's got a big brain. <laughs> she's got a lot of stuff to uh, share and bring to the public. She's not necessarily commercial, as, you know, a lot of people are, you know, they have these smart ideas, but they're not necessarily commercial, though they are really good at ideas at the core. However, because everybody's turning her down and she's like, okay, I got to work on my presentation. There's somebody that makes fun of her. Uh, and this guy apparently is the owner of several men's uh, erotica magazines. And he just makes fun of her from when he meets her for the first time. He gives him his card. He gives her his card. But he's kind of, you know, in a devil I don't care attitude. Um... And while she's turning him down, because he keeps telling her, you know, you might want to come to me also. And uh, she knows exactly what he does. So she replies to him, why don't, instead of putting all that stuff out there and saying that it's for women, why not put, bring, like, you could be the model for a magazine for women and you could show yourself in the full Monty. And that would actually be helping women much more than all the stuff that you say that you do here. So from that joke, and then she drops her magazine. The guy sees it, picks it up. He brings it to his models, the ones that pose for the men's magazines. And the models read the articles that she has there. And they love them. That was the, the message that I super liked. It was the ladies that were models for, for men's, you know, gentlemen's erotic magazines that enjoy the uh, equality in payment or in paychecks. 
the health and reproduction, the all the freedom thought provoking thoughts that she has the thought provoking thoughts. So all the perspectives, <laughs> progressive perspectives that she has in that magazines, it's the women that she never thought that she could serve because she was thinking of well, she wasn't thinking of those women. But those are the ones, her early adopters, basically. I was like, yes. <laughs> and this guy who's like your, the, the editor that, or the sponsor that she never wants to. It's like in the beginning, she has to be coerced by her sister to actually accept the guy because he's wrong on so many levels for her. Like he publishes that, he doesn't understand, he, she doesn't like his attitude and all of that. So she has all these cons against him and no pros. And it's her highly conservative sister that actually <laughs> has to present her, you know, maybe this is the only person that gives you a shot and you should take it. And uh, so that's a 1970s married housewife with a kid who's not living a you're going to see throughout the show, not necessarily living her best intimate life. And she encourages her sister, you know, take the opportunity, put this out there. Uh, and there are a lot of discussions, you know, around women's uh, intimate lives, married lives, women's satisfaction back then. So those are, they're presenting basically the roots of what we see now. And I, I really, I enjoyed that. It wasn't as um, exploded as everything is right now. And a lot of this explosion is, well, not necessarily stuff that I like, I'll be honest. I may be a coach, but I'm also a human being. And as a human being, like everybody else, I have my style, my preferences, my filters, my compatibilities and incompatibilities. Not all the stuff that I see out there calls out to me. And not all of it would be a match for me, basically. So the roots, the inception of a movement like that, and, and the highly, like, I love Joyce. This is the main character, the one that has the idea for the feminist magazine. I love her. I really do. She's like my kind of girl. <laughs> Ooh. So there are other feminine characters there. One is super bitter and, and sarcastic. I don't like her, the politician or the councilwoman. Pfft, wow, I so don't like that type of woman. Man, I like the brilliant, intuitive, daring, unusual, progressive women, but I don't like the bitter, traditional, narrow-minded, and I don't know. I, I was going to say a word, but I'm not going to say it. So um, there are, obviously, the, the pornographic part is also there. And this one is probably, it's what happened, like it's realistic. They had to audition for the centerpiece, so the guy that would show himself in the full Monty in, for women. And by the way, the audience for this magazine, it's not just women, it's also queer folk or folks. And so gay men and, and queer women, queer men who enjoy other kinds of expressions, not just the white dude sexuality, which... Most of pornography, even today, it's done by those people, still. So, um, but back in, in 1970s, when we weren't alive, most of us watching here, it was even worse. So that was like a breath, breath of fresh air. Uh, that was something that I also liked, and the input that they got, and the feedback that they got from a lot of other people, not just the ladies that were posing for men's or gentlemen's magazines. Um, one other thing that really got to me, and this is, you're going to see it throughout the episodes, so it has 10 episodes, is the clash of, I don't know if it's mentality or ego or power between Doug, the guy that has the, um, all the magazines and he's sponsoring and producing as in making sure that it happens. So he give his his infrastructure to Joyce to make her magazine happen. So he comes with the material and financial part. She comes with the idea and the vision. And she builds it along the way. And basically she comes with the novelty there. So towards the end, there's a clash of power between them. And it's... 
I think this is realistic even today. So I think this also happens in business. I think this happens in art. There's the artist and the creative person, the innovator, the ones that, that have the ideas, the brilliant, new, progressive ideas. And then there are the people that have the funding, the material, the, the yeah, all of that part. Once these two meet and each gives their best, there is a clash also that happens because when these two meet and success comes along, and in this case with the magazine Minx, there's a success, obviously, just after two editions. Um, the guy wants, he's coerced also, his ego is played also like... There's more there, okay? There's temptation from the outside. There's people that want to, you know, shove a, a little rat in there and, or a snake in there. <laughs> Just, you know, sneak their tails in. But the clash is there and it's pretty real. And I think that's also very realistic in today's world, not just in 1970s. Uh, that one really, it got to me, I'll be honest. And I liked how she managed it. It wasn't easy, I'll be honest, to... Like, it wasn't easy for her to go through all the stuff that she went through. So on that note, I'm going to leave it here. I invite you to check out the show if you resonate. And also, I'm going to remind you again, personal growth, your expansion, doesn't come from the necessarily from the entertainment. Your actual progress, your actual growth, comes from what you do on a consistent basis. What you do for yourself, on yourself. This is where intimacy coaching can help. This is where books can help. Programs can help. This is where practices can help. And the ones that are, I have are accessible, obviously. The practices, highly accessible, and you can check them out. They are on Patreon right now. Consider joining and actually doing them. So, um, that's it. I'm going to see you with other videos. I'm going to stop here with the recommendation series. <laughs> Bye.